Well, like two weeks later, I'm back at it again. So, funny how life keeps getting in the way of getting any of this actually completed. And at least my finger did heal up here, so hopefully you can see that here when you get it to focus. Yeah, like all that skin there basically died and fell off. It was great. This is a bit too much for my OCD, I think. So, I think I'll just take it down, and I think I'm going to use my handy dandy tool to make this hole a little bit taller and a little bit more oblong. That should give me some flexibility to make both of these upper and lower chunks of conduit be level with each other. Hopefully that gives me a little bit more wiggle room up and down to get all these things level with each other. Alright, I think my OCD can survive this now rather than making my brain itch every time I walk by the panels. So next I need to start worrying about getting the wire run through that conduit there. And that's going to be going to the grid input for the inverters and then I have a chunk of Romex to go from the output of the inverters into the transfer switch. So I gotta drill another set of holes for that Romex and get these cables run. I left myself a little bit of slack up there but it's gonna run down alongside the panels here and go into the transfer switch and then shoot straight across here and connect into a breaker here. And that will be the grid input to the inverters and then I will have the other Romex running side by side with it and that will be the output from the inverters into the transfer switch. I profoundly regret running Liquitite through floor joists. I thought I could save a few bucks over buying Romex but the extra labor and hassle is not worth it. If you do this just run Romex if you can. Do not do Liquitite. The only thing worse than trying to feed liquidite conduit through holes and floor joists is trying to remove it from set holes and floor joists because you did it wrong. Now that I have that pulled out, that is going to be my hole for the Romex that I have. And I'm going to move the liquidite further toward the wall. and. To that aim, I have gotten out the bigger drill to make sure that this time I have inch and a half holes and not just inch and a quarter holes to try to get that liquidite through. Is that wood in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? If you're wondering if that sucked, it very much did suck. It's basically like standing at the exhaust port of a sawmill and putting your face up against it. This is one reason why I regret trying to use Liquitite for this application. There is simply so much friction in this length of Liquitite that even getting the pull tape through the conduit was difficult. So I think I'm going to use some lubricant and I'm going to use this overkill mule tape to try to pull the wires through this ridiculous conduit that I chose. I'm going to try out this Klein Tools spray lubricant rather than using one of those big jugs of goo that gets everywhere. If you've never tried using cable lubricant before basically gets on everything and you end up being covered in lubricant yourself. <laughs> so I'm hoping this is cleaner and easier and gets further down the conduit, making the overall pull easier. They weren't kidding about the foam part, that's for sure. That was a real pain to begin with, but once that lubricant got all the way down the conduit, that was lickety split. I probably could have just left this up in the floor joist and pulled it with that stuff. Holy crap. 
messy, but as they say, lubrication is essential. Yeah, inch and a half holes are much easier to feed the stuff through floor joists than inch and a quarter for sure. You got it all that extra hanging out down there. With this big angle on it, with all this conduit and this lubricant is so good I can go like this in and out, in and out, in and out. As I said, lubrication is essential. And just like that, we got that line pulled. I've decided to use this actually as the feed from the inverter panel down there over into the transfer switch. I'm going to come in from the top here, down the side, and then through here and into the transfer switch. And then I will use the Romex that I have, which is this big beefy stuff. I'm going to use that for the feed to the inverters from the grid. This should be much easier to feed than that Liquitite. It's another night and I think I'm going to get the main wiring between these panels put in before I try to feed in all the 4 gauge from the inverter. So I got this nice thick fun to work with stuff. It's actually a pretty good deal. I got it off of eBay. And it is actually copper. At least that end looks like copper to me. So let's hope it's all copper all the way through. I have never worked with one gauge THHN before. That's pretty stiff stuff, especially compared to welding wire like I'm used to. I'm finding that the best way to deal with it so far is to actually shape it like a piece of pipe or conduit. And then, once you have it in the proper shape, then go ahead and install it. Trying to put it into the lugs and bend it where you want it to go puts a lot of stress on the lugs, and I was worried about damaging them. I got the transfer switch wired to the critical loads panel. The 1 gauge THHN was a bit of a bear, but I did want to have 1 gauge because that is a 100 amp breaker there, and you cannot run 4 or 6 gauge with 100 amps. This is for future proofing in case I sell the house. If I sell, I can go ahead and put a generator inlet box right there. And then whoever buys the house can toss a generator cord through that window and plug straight into the critical loads panel through the transfer switch. And then I can just take my inverter and stuff with me when I sell the house. The THHN for the 1 gauge is only black. It's very difficult, if not impossible, to source wire that size in different colors. The NEC does allow using marking methods if the size of the wire is 4 gauge or larger. Anything smaller than 4 gauge is required to have the proper color coding if it is a neutral or a ground. If you are running actual live wires like in a three phase or something like that you can use other colors if you like but for the neutral and for the ground the colors have to match if it's, four, if it's larger than 4 gauge. Note that the ground wire is quite a bit smaller than the 1 gauge. For 100 amp service, the ground wire size required is 6 gauge, so that is what I use, and it is, was much, much easier to work with than the 1 gauge. Now I pulled the wire through into the box and got it all pulled into the transfer switch box. And I got the conduit connected properly and tightened down. I'm going to add a, an outlet on the bottom of the transfer switch, which will run our lovely off-grid deep freeze. We just dedicate a circuit just for that that runs straight off of the critical loads panel. Then I'll go ahead and continue from there. Outlet's wired up. So that's going to be the first actual breaker in the critical loads panel is the deep freeze. I do need to get a cover for that, but I'll go to Home Depot because apparently I did not 
buy one with the box for some reason. So I'm going to wire up this side first, then I'll go back over the other panel. That way I can pull any excess through if I need to. Got the inverter side done. Give myself a little bit of an extra loop there for future proofing. The red wire is curled up there because that goes to inverter 2 whenever I get a second inverter. And I got it all nicely screwed down and secured properly. So I will go back over to the transfer switch side now and finish that side. Got the inverter side of the transfer switch done. That should let me fire up the critical loads panel at least and make sure everything functions from the inverter side. Next I need to wire up the 1 gauge wire for the 100 amp breaker and run it over to the main panel. That will be another day because I want to get all the wires run into the main panel so that when I turn the main breaker off it's only off for a minimum amount of time rather than keeping it off for hours and hours or doing it repeatedly. For tonight, I think I'm going to test this real quick and then I'm going to go to bed. And I fired it all up. Turned all the breakers on and no sparks or anything, at least not yet. <laughs> Knock on wood. So, I, my, uh, that was even wired right. Amazing, right? Well, I'm going to go to bed now because it is after 4 a.m. and we'll see what I do tomorrow. I may just take a day off. We'll see.